Hey everybody and welcome to the Charles River Center's 25th annual Building a Dream Benefit Gala. I'm Tom Lydon, the sports anchor at Boston 25 News and I'm your MC for tonight's event. And we are celebrating 25 years. It's the 25th anniversary tonight. Over the years, more than $4 million has been raised and with these funds, you've helped the Charles River Center build new homes and support programs and services for more than 950 adults, children, and their families in 30 separate Boston area communities. I'm so excited to be a part of this year's event. Certainly look forward to doing this in person again soon. Big thanks to Hillary Ryan and John Timmerman for reaching out and asking me to be your host again. I've learned a lot about the Charles River Center in the last few years. So impressed with the incredible work that we witness every day. Simply put, the Charles River Center, wonderful organization that continues to create new opportunities and build stronger communities for people with disabilities. Before we jump into tonight's program, I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of three very special people, all of whom were vital to the Charles River Center community. All three were strong advocates for the disability community and were honorees at the Building a Dream Gala. Mel Coleman in 2000, Dick Hoyt as part of Team Hoyt in 2007, and Travis Roy in 2010. We're gonna start with Mel. In 1972, James Mel Coleman was asked to assist Charles River Arc and provide a business perspective. He didn't have a vested interest in the organization, but he was happy to offer them his expertise. That began a commitment that lasted more than 40 years. Mel was instrumental in helping individuals with disabilities obtain jobs, and he collaborated with Filene's to launch the first Building a Dream Gala. Mel served on the board of directors and served as an honorary board member until his passing this year. Serving Charles River was a passion in Mel's life. Next, a moment to honor Dick Hoyt. Team Hoyt was a beloved fixture of the Boston Marathon for more than 30 years. Dick ran the Boston Marathon and so many other road races, pushing his son Rick in a wheelchair. John Grugan, former president of the Charles River Center, noted that Team Hoyt demonstrated what everyone can achieve given the opportunity and how all can be included in community activities, sports, school, and the workplace. And this is one that hits close to home with me, Travis Roy. Although his accident as a freshman hockey player at BU left him paralyzed, Travis Roy lived a life of courage, determination, and displayed a power to transform the lives of everyone around him. He founded the Travis Roy Foundation to help people with spinal cord injuries increase their independence and raised funds for vital research projects that may lead to a cure. In addition, he inspired self-confidence and self-esteem in others. He demonstrated that there are no limits. Anyone with disabilities can lead a fulfilling and productive life if just given the chance. Three great people who will be sorely missed, but fondly remembered. Okay, tonight's agenda, let's get to it. We're going to honor Golf for All, a nonprofit organization dedicated to transforming the lives of all people with disabilities or people experiencing hardships by providing free accessibility to the game of golf. Then we're gonna hear about Andy Doyle, who's made amazing progress during his time with Charles River. Andy's determination and positive attitude provide examples for all of us. The program then is going to move into watching a video about Charles River Center's impact on meeting the needs of its community. And then we're going to finish the evening with a fund a need auction hosted by Mike Riley. Very fun guy. You can hear on the radio. Sarge is also a great public address announcer, so it will be great to have him back with us again this year, even if it is virtually. The auction supports a number of Charles River Center programs, including residential expansion, innovative day services. So please remember the important work that you've heard about tonight and give as generously as you can. Thank you to the honorees and a big thanks to the generous corporate sponsors, especially our platinum sponsors, Cambridge Trust Charitable Foundation, Peter Didon and Tess Schmalbach, Global Property Services, Lizer Corporation, Norfolk and Dedham Group Foundation, and Prosper Solutions. We'd also like to thank the Charles River Center Board of Directors, Gala Committee, volunteers, 
families, program participants, and of course, all of you for joining us tonight. Remember to check out the online auction located on the left of your screen. Bid often. The online auction will remain open until 12 p.m. Friday, May 7th. At this time, I'd like to introduce Anne-Marie Bajwa, president and CEO of the Charles River Center. Thank you, Tom, for being our MC this evening. We truly appreciate your support. I want to thank you for being part of the community. Good evening. My name is Anne Marie Bajwa, President and CEO of the Charles River Center. Tonight, we're thrilled to be able to celebrate the accomplishments of remarkable people with disabilities and their supporters at our 25th annual Building a Dream virtual gala. Even though we're not in person this year, we're very happy you've chosen to spend the evening with us. Together, we'll learn about the determination and the commitment of our two honorees, Golf for All and Andy Doyle. We'll also hear about the impact of the pandemic on our community and how it created opportunities for us to explore new and innovative ways to deliver services, all while raising funds to ensure we can, can continue person-centered services in the community. When we create new opportunities, we also build stronger communities. Let us begin the evening with the Maria McTernan Leadership Award. This award is named after Maria, who worked tirelessly to raise funds for the Charles River Center, including the Building a Dream Gala. She brought a level of passion, commitment, and determination that made Charles River a better place for those we serve and the staff that work so hard to brighten the lives of people with disabilities. Golf for All, this year's recipient of the Marie Maria McTernan Award, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to transforming the lives of all people with disabilities or who are experiencing hardships by providing free accessibility to the game of golf. Under the leadership of Fred Cochran, Golf for All has hosted over 1,200 clinics, giving 10,000 participants the opportunity to access the game of golf. His team of staff a network of volunteers enlighten minds, open hearts, and transform the lives of so many people facing emotional, physical, and developmental challenges. We began our relationship with Golf for All in 2017 when a group of adults with autism participated in the Joy of Golf program at the Leo J. Martin Golf Course. Now you'll see why our relationship with Golf for All is so important for, to us. This is Golf for All. The mission of Golf for All is to use golf as an effective therapy for people facing all physical, emotional, and psychological challenges. We uh, started this about 10 years ago, and in 2019, pre-COVID, we actually held over 150 clinics for veterans, for people on the spectrum, for Special Olympians, and all other physical challenges. With the NLM Family Foundation, we have a program for over 35-year-old people with autism. We work with Special Olympics of Massachusetts. We work with the VA of Brockton and uh, the VA of West Roxbury as well. We also do clinics with Perkins School, the Carroll Center for the Blind, Helping Hands. Basically, you name it, we're there. Oh, it's my favorite thing to do. I, I was a head golf professional at Braintree Municipal for 31 years, and I did programs like this. I always thought the word municipal meant open to everybody. It's what I want to do. I have a passion for it as well as Fred. And I, again, I think that's why we've become friends and uh, we're just itching to get back at it. Charles River has been involved with Golf for All since 2017, and I, I learned that it was a, a, a golf program specifically for adults with autism. And I thought, you know, what a wonderful, unique opportunity. So I reached out and we came in 2017, came in 2018 and 2019. It's an honor and a pleasure to be working with Charles River Center. The work that they do is phenomenal. And we uh, look forward to hopefully reopening the season here in 2021. It's a really good golf program. I miss it. I made a lot of friends and the coaches were really excellent and caring. I like coming and learning how to golf and then teaching me how to swing better and hitting the golf balls off the tees. The smiles that we get, the cacophony of joy that we feel from these, these clinics is amazing. 
When we first started this program here at uh, Leo J. Martin, the athletes almost had to be prodded up to the hill. Now, uh, after four years, they run up. They can't wait to get started and leave very reluctantly. Really makes them feel special and they come back to the program, um, you know, telling me how much they love it and how excited they are to return. So it's the little things that they go a long way. We finish each clinic with a putting contest. Our putting green looks more like Disneyland than a putting green. And the cheering and the noise are wonderful to hear. All these golfers rooting for each other. That's a dynamic you couldn't, uh, you couldn't buy for any price. Fred, I'd like to present the Maria McTurnan Leadership Award to you on behalf of Golf for All. Thank you for your commitment to brightening the lives of people facing challenges and with your, with your incredible programs. Because of your passion and commitment, Golf for All is providing access to golf for so many people who wouldn't think it was possible. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. Golf for All is <clears throat> excuse me, most grateful for the honor bestowed on us today by the Charles River Center. It's our honor and privilege to share with Charles River a mission to bringing fun, camaraderie, and healthful exercise to people on the spectrum. You have helped show the way to helping special needs individuals by always promoting self-respect, dignity, and compassion. We want to thank everyone at Charles River Center and wish continued success in the future. Please visit our website at www.golfforall.org. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce Mike Riley, our auctioneer for a fund to need auction that will occur later this evening. Mike is a Needham resident and currently a sports co-host at 98.5 The Sports Hub. He's also a public address announcer at the Gillette Stadium for the New England Revolution, the New England Patriots, and the Providence Friars men's hockey teams. He operates his own entertainment and sports memorabilia business and is involved with many charities, just like the Charles River Center. We are so thrilled to have you, Mike, back with us. Thanks again for oh, coming out this year. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Really appreciate it and great to be with all of you guys here tonight. For those of you watching at home, I'll be back a little bit later in the program, but before that, remember to check out the online auction. Now, the auction is available on the left-hand side of your screen. You have until tomorrow at 12 p.m. to bid. Remember, bid often and bid high. For the past 25 years, we've been presenting the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Building, at the building A Dream Gala to a person who's served who exhibits a progressive journey towards independence, community inclusion, and success. This year's Lifetime Achievement Award is being awarded to Andy Doyle. Andy's been part of the Charles River Center since 2007. In his years with us, Andy has been a great example of an individual striving towards independence. With the loving support of Andy's family and the staff at the Charles River Center, Andy has been able to achieve so much. This is Andy Doyle. Well, um, where do I begin? I'm 38 years old. I was born in Waltham. I was also born with a condition called Prader Willi syndrome, where it's a disorder where you're missing uh, the 15th chromosome and we have a appetite where we're constantly hungry, where everything basically in the kitchen has to be locked. So yeah, there was times it was difficult when parents left, went out and I was home by myself. There was definitely a time in my point when my mom uh, picked me up one day and I basically took an issue and said, you know what? I can't live like this anymore. I need a change. I ended up at the Charles River Center. I started working with Andy about seven years ago, but I've known him for about 10 years. 
Andy started at the Merritt Center and he worked there for about, I would say about five years and he developed a lot of great skills there, um, answering the phones, filing, mass mailings. Over time then he ended up being in the Opportunities to Work program, which he also worked on developing more skills. About four years ago, an opportunity came up where Pavian Law was going to do an internship with him for about six months. At that time, Andy had to make the decision to leave a job that he was, you know, really comfortable in. So that was a hard decision for him. I was offered a job here. Uh, first started off as an internship, and then since I've pretty much have learned things here, Pretty quickly, they offered me uh, a permanent position, uh, which I took. But when Andy first came to us in February of 2017, four years ago now, he started off slow. He came with his case manager um, to learn the duties that he had to do for his part-time file clerk position. At the time, he was feeding the fish, he was watering the plants, and he was learning how to put data into our tracking system. He immediately was completely embraced by our team, and he's one of us. He goes to our outings, he played softball, he did our uh, scavenger hunts. He, he's like any other team member. That being said, I, I've had this unique opportunity to really watch him grow, and I remember when Andy came on, there was a lot of concern about giving Andy a ton of stability, not moving him around a lot, really keeping him in place. And Andy came on at a time where since he started, we've just undergone massive growth. We've expanded our office, I think, three times now, and we've moved Andy's desk more times than I can remember. And he has embraced it. He hasn't even flinched. He just keeps telling me, don't worry about it every time I ask him how he's doing. But the best thing I can say about Andy is he really is one of us. And, and he will always be one of us. And, and the disability piece is far from anything I even think about at this point with Andy. Favorite part of the job, uh, I like working with the people. Everybody's very nice. We're pretty much in the same age group. Some are a little younger than me. I'm basically the oldie here. <laughs> I like feeding the fish. That's my favorite thing. Here I'm known as the fish whisperer, where uh, many fish have not died under my care. But the other days I've, I'm not here. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> we haven't had to look for anyone in this role in four years now, and I have no doubt that Andy's probably gonna retire with me. Um, I don't think we'll ever have to look for this role again. It's been a really nice way to, to feel like we're giving back to the community, although I always say whenever someone thanks me from the Charles River Center, I say thank you, because it has been a mutually beneficial program. And I think there's very few opportunities like that where everyone benefits from this. The Charles River Center, my firm, and Andy have all benefited from this partnership. Seeing him be so successful um, and just getting a quick text from him or an email. A couple weeks ago he texted me, he said, I've been at Pabian Law now for four years. When I read that, I was, I kind of got a little shaky and got chills thinking, oh my gosh, he's he's doing so well. And to hear that and to be able to work with him is it's pretty amazing. Uh, in the long run, yeah, it was it was a good decision. I feel very proud. Aside from Andy's successful career at Pabian Law, Andy is kind to all who encounter him. He's a great role model, always participating in groups and expanding his skills. I used to love to see Andy at the front desk on Wednesdays because I knew we would have a fun day. He has a great sense of humor. Andy, I'd like to present to you the Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations on your well-deserved success. Thanks to the Charles River Center for all their support in teaching me job skills and about being more independent. Without all of you, I wouldn't be standing here this evening receiving this honor. I would like to thank a few people. Ashley Pugliaris for hiring me as the front desk coordinator at the Merit Center. Elaine Cashy for help being my case manager and helping me start 
a new job with the law firm and helping me become more independent. Keith Pabian and Kali Williams for making me a valuable team member at the law firm. And lastly, my family for helping me succeed in being the man I am today. Thanks for the honor and enjoy the rest of the evening. And now it's time for our friend Mike Riley to return and help us raise critical funds for the Charles River Center. Take it away, Mike. All right, thank you very much. And once again, thrilled to be back here today to help raise funds for this incredible organization, the Charles River Center, as you know, a wonderful organization that provides services for children and adults with disabilities and their families in the greater Boston area. And obviously we are here with you tonight in a virtual setting. We hope to return to an in-person setting next year, but this event could not have gone off with all of the hard work behind the scenes. Uh, Hillary, Ashley, and Sarah working really hard to make this night a success. So uh, thank you very much to them to put on this unbelievable show and the whole production. Uh, and we're ready to rock and roll, folks. We know why we're here. We know why we're here. We're here to help out the Charles River Center. So please, whatever you are able to give, be generous. Let's go. And we do want to announce one other thing, too. The Lucky Building a Dream Gala Raffle winners. We'll start with the first prize winner. For $1,000, the uh, winner is Maureen Chisholm. Congratulations, Maureen. There you go. Our second prize winner for the Apple Watch Series 6, that is Kathleen Ash. Congratulations, Kathleen. And our third place prize is a $250 Amazon gift card. Uh, that is Leslie Lockhart. Congratulations to all of the raffle winners. And at this time, let's take a quick moment to learn more about the impact that the pandemic had on Charles River and how they are building a stronger community. This is the Charles River Center. I noticed right away when we came to Charles River, RJ's complete demeanor was more enhanced and he was more relaxed. And I could tell once he was in Charles River, big smiles and he had a routine that was built up. And once he had that routine, he was just in a groove. Everyone kind of knows each other. And when I've come to pick Nat up, everybody's like, hey, Nat. And I know that people saying, hey, Nat, are not in his room but they know him. I just feel like he's completely accepted for who he is. Charles Rivers help families a lot. They communicate with the families, they let them know what's going on, they involve. The best thing about Charles Rivers is the culture, diversity, flexibility, understanding, caring, all of us working together as a team to improve the program, to make it better. Because we have only one mission, one goal is to make sure that the clients are well taken care of. As I walk through the doors of the Charles River Center each morning, I feel a sense of pride for what we've become over the years. We've been able to provide meaningful activities, fun activities, things of interest to our residents and our persons served. It really brings me great joy to see that each and every day. We really feel that we were listened to. We were actually listened to. It wasn't, this is the way we do things, and this, you know, this is what we're going to do. It was a real listening on the part of leadership, a real listening on the part of staff. If we wanted to do something, or we had some concerns, we were working together. Yeah. Charles River Center really helps families by going the extra mile and providing amazing services for whatever the individuals and the families might need. The residential services is really around-the-clock services that we provide for our individuals here. We have many group homes throughout the great Boston area and at these homes we really focus on developing the individuals overall life skills and uh, independence we really want to push them to grow as independent as possible as individuals day services here at Charles River is comprised of three different programs uh, we have a day habilitation program community-based day supports program and an employment program Family and in-home support services provides a wide spectrum of programs and services for children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. With our children, 
We provide after-school programming, in-home supports. A lot of our navigators are advocating for the needs of our children and family, attending IEP meetings, really creating programming based on what the needs of the children and families are. In addition, we work with adults and we provide services to these individuals with the help of DDS and that might look like skills training, adult companionship, and respite services. These services not only support the individual, but the families that they are living with. All of us, COVID was a challenge for all of us. Charles River took it seriously, so I always felt the maximizing yeah. happiness, we were informed. access, information, communication, and the safety. Yeah. There's no better place that yeah. I saw uh, in terms of how it was handled. It's had a huge impact uh, on the individuals uh, when day services were closed. The individuals uh, were no longer able to come in person to the day program. They were no longer able to participate in community activities. Uh, they weren't able to see their friends or their peers. Quickly, everyone learned how to use Zoom, and we realized that the programming we were doing in person could be done online. And we found that families really enjoyed having those options. A few weeks into it, Charles River started the online classes, and Nat was interested right away, which really surprised us because he doesn't usually like screens, but he knew the faces, and the questions were, were engaging for him. So we reopened the day programs back in August to a very small group of individuals and it was totally different. Brand new protocols, every day they have to come in, get their temperatures done, fill out a paper, bathroom protocols, the activities we do, everything is totally different. And it's really, you know, all about keeping everyone safe, cleaning, hand washing, wearing masks, doing all of those things to give them a place to go, but also stay safe. Charles River has done an excellent job at also providing care for our staff. First and foremost, they really put our safety above all. Um, they're always checking in on how each of the homes are doing and all of the different departments in terms of health and providing also great resources for those staff in terms of uh, testing dates and vaccination opportunities. As we look to the future, we will continue to empower people with disabilities and their families by providing innovative, person-centered programs that foster independence and community inclusion. We've established two group homes on the Southeast region, serving men and women with acquired brain injury. We're also going to be answering the need for the people who turned 22 over the past year. They've been unable to move into group homes due to the pandemic. We've also expanded our family support services into the Metro West region. We also have expanded our clinical services to include more nursing and two registered behavioral technicians so that we can better integrate clinical services throughout the agency. We are so excited for things to start opening up. Our team is excited to begin different programming. We're excited to see our individuals cooking and baking and sewing and doing artwork and enjoying the outdoors. We're using a lot of technology. Uh, we're utilizing, you know, tablets and iPads and Zoom calls. I think we're kind of seeing what the future of day programming might look like. Trying to, even when we bring everybody back, trying to maintain some of these smaller groups, less distractions, better environment, and really just more efficient programming in general. I think Charles River is coming out stronger. We're coming out with a new sense of hope. We're excited, we've adapted, we've seen that we're flexible, and with those qualities, nothing will stop us. We're gonna really have an amazing future. The true heroes of all of this is the individuals that we serve. From day to day, we ask them to alter their lives completely, and uh, they were able to really do that and adapt with us and grow with us through this uh, experience. And I believe that our company and everyone a part of this greater community has come out better and stronger on the other side. We really couldn't have made it through this without the support of our community members um, and really everyone out there, whether it's donations or supplies or just moral support. With the whole yeah. team here, yeah. I feel inspired to be part of things. We are incredibly grateful for the support of our community members. But now more than ever, as we begin to reopen and plan for the future, we need your continued support. If you have a good heart, 
check Charles River website and then I'll see what we're all about. All about love, caring, understanding, and then we are a team. Thank you for all your support. Thank you. 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 I thank you. 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 So as you can see, the pandemic has created opportunities for Charles River to explore new and innovative ways to deliver programs and services. Tonight, we need your help to support this crucial work. Before we begin with our donations, we are at just over $21,000 right now. Our goal this year is to hit 30,000. So if we can get to 30,000 tonight, that would be fantastic. And a great way to begin right now is with $1,000 donations. So it is your chance to donate as generously as you can. Click the donate button now for $1,000. That donate button now is located on the left hand side of your screen. For $1,000, you will support residential expansion for individuals with acquired brain injury and young adults transitioning into adult services who need a place to call home. You will also support expanding clinical services to better integrate those services throughout this incredible community. That is for $1,000, please. Now, it's time. So we thank Mark and Linda Goldman. Thank you for making a difference. Also, many thanks to the Chaston family and Judy, Judith Chafee for answering the call. You are all supporting our residential expansion needs. And we have some more $1,000 donors. In fact, we are now over 22,000 right now. Let's get to 30,000 if we can. Don't forget, this helps support residential expansion and also clinical services. James uh, Ruhlback, thank you so much for your generous contribution of $1,000 thousand dollars. Thank you, James. Again, that donate button now on the left hand side of your screen. We now move to $500. So the donate button now for $500. There you go. Located on the left hand side of the screen for $500. You will help support hybrid day programs. Boy, what a difference that's made during this pandemic here. And that does include both virtual and in-person programming, expanding the use of technology and the need for additional devices, including tablets, iPads, and computers. That is all for $500. Thank you so much to Leonard Rienzi, and many thanks to Kathleen and Tony Schooner, and to Jeremiah Eck. And now we are over $23,000, folks. We want to get to 30,000. Patty Paul, thank you so much for your $500 contribution. Susan Barber, $500 contribution as well. We are over 23,000, like I said. Let's get it up to 30. We can do this. Now we're over 24,000. This is a beautiful thing. Oh, let's keep going. Jerry McTernan, 500 from you. Thank you so much, Jerry McTernan. We want to get to 30,000. Janet Bernardo, thank you, Janet, for your generous contribution. We're almost at 25,000. 24 is a great number, but I think 25 is a much better number than 24. Meme Ruggieri, thank you, Meme, for your generous contribution of $500. Let's get up to 25,000 people if we can. We're at 24,650. 500 more, that'll put us over the $25,000 mark. Come, someone else, let's go here. If we can do this to 25,000, that is what we'd like to get in the next 60 seconds. Oh yeah, we just did it. Here we go. We are at $25,150 for our total right now. Thank you so much, Nancy Wagman, for your generous contribution of $500 right there. Oh, this is great. This is a beautiful thing. We're still taking $500 donations again. We want to get to $30,000 by the night. And you know what? We just hit 
$26,000. Ladies and gentlemen, John Timmerman, thank you for your generous contribution of 1,000. So yeah, if you wanna throw in more than 500, we'll take it, we'll gladly take it, don't worry about that. So there you go, we're taking the 500, but if you wanna go higher, don't be afraid to do that. That's not an issue at all. We'll gladly take it. 26,750 is what we're at right now. Paul Roby, thank you for your generous contribution as well. Paul, thank you. We are at 26,850. Uh, again, 30,000 is our goal. And uh, yeah, we have more people coming in with the numbers, $500, like we said, that does go to technology needs for computers, iPads, and tablets. And of course, if you wanna throw more than 500 there, 1,000 will support residential expansion and expand clinical services. We are over $27,000 right now. In fact, let me tell you the exact number we're at. We're at 27,850. I'd like to get to 28,550. Who wants to do that? I'm gonna put that challenge out right now. Steven Naka, thank you for your generous contribution right there just moments ago. Uh, we are now at 28, that you guys are answering the call. This is amazing. 28,850 right now. Folks, we're just under 2,000 away from our goal where we wanna get to 30,000, that is a really nice thing. Okay, so that's the $500 donation. If you wanna donate more than that, that is fine. But right now we are going to uh, move to our $250 category. Please click the donate button now for $250. That is located on the side of the screen there. For uh, $250, you'll support adaptive strategies for supporting individuals and their families living at home, including vacation programs, extended day programs, uh, respite opportunities, and special Olympic events. Thank you to Stephen DiPietro, also to Jane and Michael Gamboli, Robert Manass as well. You guys are awesome. Your support has truly made an impact here, and we have more people coming in for $250 right now. Irene and Gary Gladstone, Richard Allenbeck, John Grugan, Elizabeth Snyder, Stephen Fole, Tom Muldoon, Gail Nani. That's a $1,000 donation right there from Gail and Keith Pabian with a $500 donation. We're at 29,600. We are $400 away from our goal of 30,000. If we, oh, okay, now this is, a, this is a beautiful thing. We're at 29,900 right now. We're just $100 away. So I, we want 250, but we'll take whatever you are able to give. So thank you so much, everyone. Rich Nex, thank you for your generous contribution of $300. Again, if you click that donate button now, we're looking for 250, but folks, we have just surpassed our goal. We are at $30,250 right now. Two years ago, we hit 40,000. That may now have to be the goal for the night here. Maureen Callahan, thank you for your generous contribution. Uh, again, we're at the 250 mark here. It supports respite programs, special Olympic events, and vacation programs as well. We're at $30,450. I'd like it to get to 31,450. I think that's a little better number than 30,000. So I'm going to put that challenge out there. We're on our way. 30,700 right now is what we have for the, uh, the total for the donations. You guys are awesome. Thank you all so very much. And what has been a bizarre year, as we know, you guys are so generous to do your part here tonight. And Everything, we'll be able to do this in person, hopefully at this time next year, but Susie K uh, Kajunski with another generous donation as well. Thank you for uh, being a part of this virtually tonight and uh, still time to donate because we're gonna go for the $100 category. There's our final category of the night. All you gotta do is click the donate button now for $100 located on the left-hand side of the screen. For $100, you'll be supporting a stronger Charles River community. As you know, a community that has adapted, demonstrated flexibility, and is excited about the future. We thank Teresa and Marty Boehm, 
also Barbara and Tom Harkins and Mike Taggart for making a difference. $100 donations. This is what we're looking at right now. George Marks, thank you. Joy Gallant, thank you. Denise Joyce, thank you. Kathleen Steber, Matt Pryor, Jeff Sicalini, Winnie Doyle, Kazim Maritala, Nicoletto Kojakora, Jeff Ryan, Alice Taylor, uh, Cheryl Hocko, Bill Dermody, thank you. Also, Joe Brettfielder. We're at 31150 Joe, thank you for the $250 donation right there. We're looking for 100 but we'll gladly take more, of course. 31150 is what we're at. We have just surpassed our goal. But I'd like to get, uh, what do you say, 35000 anybody? I think that's a much nicer number than 31000 Can we try to answer the call here over the next few minutes? We're at 31150 If we can get to 35000 that would be a B-E-A beautiful thing. Let's go, folks. We're still at 100 here. We got more people coming in right now. Brenda uh, Calixte, thank you for your generous donation as well. 31250 is what we're at. I'm putting the challenge out there for 35000 if we can get that over the next couple of minutes. Still time to donate on the auction items as well. Don't forget about that, folks. Uh, as you know, tonight we are here celebrating the achievements of individuals with disabilities. We're here for Andy Doyle and everyone else. Joanne Friedman, thank you for your generous donation. Paul Dilly, thank you, Paul. 31700 is what we're at. Maureen McTurnan, thank you for your donation just moments ago. We're looking for 100 but we will gladly take whatever. As you know, $100 will support a stronger Charles River community. If you want to add more on to the 100 let me tell you one more time what $250 does. It supports respite, uh, respite care programs, including Special Olympic events as well as vacation programs. Also, if you want to go to that 500 mark, 500 will go right to technology needs, computers, iPads, and tablets. And if you want to go for the Grand Slam 1,000, oh yeah, 1,000 will support residential expansion and expand clinical services. So we're at 31,800. Robert Cord, thank you for the latest contribution here moments ago. Click on that uh, bottom left side of your screen there, the donate now for $100. I'd love to get it to 35. I would love to get it to 35,000, 31,800, but everyone has been so generous now. You guys are fantastic. Still time to bid on the auction items behind me. Like I said, we have a Nespresso machine. We have Bose headphones here. Uh, we've got a un look at this picture of Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman right here. You know, we just, he just retired for the Patriots. Super Bowl 53 MVP. That's a picture of him in action right there. Super Bowl 53. Oh yeah, there it is. And it's a ticket stub from Super Bowl 53. We got Ray-Ban sunglasses. We got a little bit of everything for a little bit of everyone. So be sure to keep bidding because the the uh, online auction closes tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. We're at 31,800. Uh, you guys have been fantastic tonight. We did surpass our goal. We wanted to get to at least 30,000. I put the challenge out there for 35. Someone else, please help answer the call here. That would be really nice. I, you know, at least 32,000. We're at 31,800. How about let's make that an even number at 32,000. I'll lower that just a bit to try to speed this up. Maybe a couple other $100 donations and then I would love 35, but 32,000 would be awesome. Come on, two more people for 100 bucks each. Let's go. Get it up to 32,000, please. That would be greatly appreciated. So there we go, guys. I want to thank all of you very much. You've all been so generous tonight. Unbelievable donors here. And uh, again, during these uh, crazy circumstances, we are all going through uh, for all of you to be here online and take part of this event here it really means a lot to all of us. And again, the online auction will remain open until 12 p.m. tomorrow. At this time, we're going to send it back to our MC Tom Lydon, who is at the Boston 25 studio. My name is Mike Riley. Tom, back to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and for making this event a great success. Congratulations to the deserving honorees, Golf for All and Andy Doyle. There is still time to bid on those auction items. The online auction will remain open until 12 p.m. Friday, May 7th.
thanks from the bottom of our hearts for coming and for watching here tonight. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next year, hopefully in person.